Good afternoon. As Marshal of the University of Chicago, it is my honor to welcome you to the 532nd Convocation of the University of Chicago and the presentation of diplomas to the graduates of the Division of the Social Sciences. Let me now introduce the Dean of the Social Sciences Division, Amanda Woodward. Please be seated. On behalf of the faculty of the Division of the Social Sciences, welcome to Rockefeller Memorial Chapel and to the University of Chicago. This morning, President Robert J. Zimmer conferred degrees on 175 students who've completed programs of advanced studies in the social sciences. This afternoon, my colleagues and I um, have the honor to recognize your achievements individually by presenting you with the diplomas and hoods of the University of Chicago. And today we celebrate two kinds of accomplishments. Um, we, ce we celebrate your accomplishments, but we also mark the culmination of our own work as faculty in the social sciences. In recognizing um, these graduates of our programs, we also reflect upon our own accomplishments as teachers, um, advisors, and directors. And each year, we honor one of our number upon nomination by the students with a faculty award for excellence in graduate teaching. And we're pleased to recognize one of our faculty members today. And let me introduce Professor William Howell, Chair of the Department of Political Science, to present the award. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Pitts is an exemplary teacher, mentor, and advocate for graduate education. At every step, she, root, she roots for her students, she sides with them in the regular course of study, she stands by them in failure, and she delights in their success. A first-rate scholar in her own right, she is generous with both her time and counsel. When she speaks, people listen. And when her students speak, she pays meticulous attention. She's a terrific colleague and a trusted guide. And if that were not enough, she is also an effective reformer. Her steady attention, wisdom, and serious mindedness have yielded vital changes to our department's PhD program that will pay dividends for years to come. Dean Woodward, I have the honor to present Jennifer Pitts for the Faculty Award for Excellence in Graduate Teaching and Mentoring. A brilliant, yeah. mm -hmm. a brilliant scholar and tireless advocate for graduate students, Jennifer Pitts has established herself as an anchor in the study of political theory at the University of Chicago. It is my privilege to introduce Professor Robert Pippin, who will deliver the remarks. Professor Pippin is the Evelyn Stephenson Neff Distinguished Service Professor in the John U. Neff Committee on Social Thought, the Department of Philosophy, and the College. Professor Pippin earned a doctoral degree in philosophy in 1974 from Pennsylvania State University. He held faculty positions at New College in Sarasota, Florida, and at the University of California, San Diego, before joining the University of Chicago in 1992. He was named a Distinguished Service Professor in 2005. With the exception of only two years, he has served as the Chair of the Committee on Social Thought since 1994. Professor Pippin's research centers primarily on the modern German philosophical tradition, with a focus on Kant and Hegel. He pursues a number of interdisciplinary interests, especially those involving the relation between philosophy and literature, and has published work on issues in theories of modernity, political philosophy, theories of self-consciousness, the nature of conceptual change, and the problem of freedom. Professor Pippin has authored over 200 scholarly articles and reviews over the course of 40 years of research. 
He's the author of many books on German philosophy, including Kant's Theory of Form, Hegel's Idealism, The Satisfactions of Self-Consciousness, Modernism as a Philosophical Problem on the Dissatisfactions of European High Culture, Hegel's Practical Philosophy, Rational Agency as Ethical Life, and After the Beautiful, Hegel and the Philosophy of Pictorial Modernism. He authored as well a book on philosophy and literature, Henry James and Modern Moral Life, and three books on film, Hollywood Westerns and American Myth, The Importance of Howard Hawks and John Ford on Political Philosophy, Fatalism in an American Film Noir, Some Cinematic Philosophy, and The Philosophical Hitchcock, Vertigo and the Anxieties of Unknowingness. Most recently, in 2018, he published Hegel's Realm of Shadows, Logic as Metaphysics and Hegel's Science of Logic. Professor Pippin was awarded the Mellon Distinguished Achievement Award in the Humanities in 2001. He is a member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the American Philosophical Society, and the German National Academy of Sciences, Leopoldina. Professor Pippin. Thank you. I think my voice will last uh, 10 minutes. As you can hear, I have a cold. So it'll be a short speech. You'll be glad to hear. It's my great privilege to deliver these brief remarks on the occasion of your receiving your graduate degrees from the University of Chicago. It's a special honor to have been asked to be part of this ceremony because for many of us, these events are signal occurrences, milestones that we remember for the rest of our lives. And now I have the good fortune to be a small part of that memory. And it's a special pleasure to conform to the first traditional duty at such an event on the part of uh, the faculty of the Social Science Division to congratulate you most heartily on your accomplishment. You have earned by your hard work and talent a graduate degree from one of the world's great universities. And although it may sound very odd to put it this way, one of the most satisfying aspects of this accomplishment is that you will always, forever afterwards, have earned such a degree. It is now a permanent part of your life history a mark of distinction that still only 1.5% of Americans have achieved and that now no one can remove or question or deprecate. You are indeed to be most heartily congratulated, as are those loved ones close to you who have supported you throughout the long process of your education. Well, you've earned a degree in the social science division, and here you are being addressed by someone, as you've heard, whose academic home is philosophy and who's published mainly on 18th, 19th, and 20th century German philosophy. And you may indeed be wondering what possible sense that could make. I think I can make a brief point about the division from which you have graduated by explaining this odd fact. One sort of answer to the question is simply that my proper academic home here at Chicago is the social science division. Although I'm also a member of Chicago's philosophy department, this is the division that recruited me here in 1991 and hired me in 1992. But that fact, of course, just adds to the mystery. The disciplinary explanation of this is not much more illuminating. I joined a PhD granting department when I came here, the Committee on Social Thought. And for 25 of my 27 years here, I have served as its chair. It is a department, along with all the other departments that have bestowed on you your degrees in the social sciences division. Still, I know none of that is very illuminating. There is no other university in the world that has a department called, or anything like, the Committee on Social Thought. The name itself can seem slightly Orwellian, like something out of 1984, as if a companion to the Central Party Committee on Private Thought or the Committee on Public Thought, or even the Committee on What Not to Think. We get a bit closer to some explanation of what I'm doing here at this podium by noting that the committee was founded 78 years ago, in 1941, by a historian, John U. Neff, an expert on the British coal mining industry, an economist, Frank Knight, an anthropologist, Robert Redfield, whose son has been a longtime member of the Committee on Social Thought, and the man who was then a lawyer, president of the university, Robert Maynard Hutchins. 
So we have an obvious social science profile. They had become convinced that graduate education was beginning to encourage very narrow disciplinary specialization so early in graduate careers that students were often in their experience unable to understand why the very specific problems they had begun to do research on were problems at all or why they might be significant. They had lost all sense of any wider context within which some issues might be better understood and especially they had so little sense of how neighboring disciplines might treat their problems that they were cut off from the light such differing approaches might usefully shed on what they were doing. As they would put it, they were being trained but not educated. So they thought there ought to be at least one department in the division where the early education in the program would expose students to great masterpieces of other disciplines as well as their own and they conceived those early years as work with a very diverse faculty on classic books in literature, philosophy, the history of economics, theology, social theory, intellectual and social history, and that these texts should range over both antiquity and modernity and should not be limited to the Western canon alone, and in the last 20 years or so, not be limited to the canonical writers that we've become accustomed to, but should be open to the voices that are now more prominent in the academy than they were at the founding. These founders <coughs> and subsequent faculty had no objection at all to concentrated research in the disciplines and specialized dissertations, but they thought it would be a good idea to have at least one department in the division that had this kind of early structure. As a measure of the success of their idea, over the years the faculty of the committee have won four Nobel Prizes, two in economics, Friedrich von Hayek and Robert Fogel, and two in literature, Saul Bellow and John Kutsi. And there have always been prominent social scientists like Hannah Arendt in political theory and intellectual history, Francois Fure in history, and Paul Friedrich in anthropology, and of course philosophers and psychoanalysts, and poets, and novelists, and theologians. And so finally, the name. When the four founders proposed this department in their division, of course there was no money for it. John Neff happened to be independently wealthy and financed the committee for the first 10 years himself. Uh, hired faculty by writing checks every year for them and gave graduate students their fellowships also by writing checks every year for them. But the department had to have a division and he was in the social science division. They did this when, uh, uh, during a period where ad hoc faculty collaboration was encouraged and common as it is now, but then organized in a system of ad hoc committees that would form and dissolve as faculty interests changed. But the prestige of the founders and the presence of the president, very influential Hutchins, gave them sufficient status to hire their own faculty eventually from outside and grant the PhD. But as John Neff explained in his autobiography, the dean at the time kept rejecting their proposed names for the committee as not sounding social science enough. On the phone with the anthropologist Redfield, Neff expressed his frustration and Redfield suggested, I don't know, how about the Committee on Social Thought. Neff responded, what in the world does that mean? To which Redfield responded, nothing. But the dean will be afraid it's something he doesn't understand and won't be willing to ask about it. <laughs> Redfield was right. The name was accepted immediately and it's been our name ever since. Now, I tell this story not just to partially explain my presence, but to explain something about the division you're graduating from. We should first realize <clears throat> that the disciplines as we know them in the modern research university basically emerged between 1870 and 1915, it's fairly recent, and were the result of a number of different and largely contingent factors. That is, the disciplines are not sacred, they're not natural kinds. They are historical creations, much more like opera and tennis than they are permanently present human practices like politics or perhaps sadly war. Their emergence was connected with a concomitant need at that time for the professionalization of differing claims to knowledge. In the United States, this professionalization was partly required by our culture of democratic egalitarianism. You could not and should not simply inherit or have arbitrarily bestowed on you the privilege of speaking with academic authority. You had to earn that right, as you all have. You are all now certified experts. And in principle, the idea was anybody who satisfied the criteria, criteria should be able to earn that right. That right should be open to all. This meant that the disciplines had to be self-regulating professions. 
with the authority to credential or refuse to credential whoever, whomever it wished, according to whatever publicly stated criteria the experts in the profession decreed were relevant. But all of this meant that these divisional lines are forever subject to change and innovation, and a university unwilling to experiment creatively with such divisions, and so to encourage faculty, as we say so often here at Chicago, to follow their ideas wherever they lead, regardless of disciplines, would soon become ossified and eventually irrelevant. So after a while, the committee began to represent to the university at large its own image of itself, its core intellectual values. In fact, this fact that the committee was founded and has endured so long here is a remarkable distinguishing feature of our university and this division. At every other university that I've been associated with and at every university where my close friends work, this would not have been possible. The committee only hires prestigious senior faculty and they're expensive. And at all these other universities, it would be inevitable that for faculty and other departments, all of whom relentlessly compete for positions, there would be considerable sustained outrage that not only was the committee hiring in their disciplines, but that resources in that division were being used not only to hire philosophers and psychoanalysts, but poets like Mark Strand and our current Rosanna Warren, and novelists like John could see. In all the 25 years I've been chair, <clears throat> at frequent chair and university meetings, I have never heard the slightest complaint like this, or even the hint of such a complaint. And I believe this tells you something important about the division you have graduated from and how distinctive it is, and about its commitment to innovation, creativity, experimentation, and its lack of complacency. But we're not here to congratulate the division, but to congratulate you and to express our gratitude to you. As I hear all the time from my colleagues, <clears throat> so much of our own research and indeed our own lives have been so enriched by being able to work with such a talented, dedicated, and to mention a virtue not frequently cited enough as an academic virtue, courageous students, as you have all proven to be. There is no doubt that universities and colleges will look very different in 20 years than they do today, as they have looked since the Second World War. But my colleagues and I have complete confidence that you are all up to these challenges and to any other you will face in any other institution. So once again, thank you. Good fortune ahead and the warmest of congratulations.
At this time, in the favoring presence of the congregation here assembled, the chairs of the several departments and programs, or their appointed representatives, will present the recipients of diplomas to the dean of the division. The faculty director of the Computational Social Sciences program will now present to the dean the recipients of the degree of Master of Arts in Computational Social Science. Dean Woodward, these students have completed the program of study prescribed by the faculty in computational social science. On behalf of the faculty in computational social science, I now have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Masters of Arts. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in computational social sciences. I now present you with the diploma of the University of Chicago. Bethany Ann Bailey. Ariel V. Boyarski. Anhua Chen. Ru Xin Chen. Shu Ting Chen. C. Chen. Yang Yang Dai. E. Luen Dai. Joseph Gabriel Denby. Xingwen Fan. Jie Hong. <laughs> Liu Sun Hui. <laughs> Andy Liao. <laughs> Cooper Niederhood. <laughs> Mong Shen Shui. Kevin Sun. Alexander Tian. Rodrigo Valdez Ortiz. Feng Feng Guan. Lirong Wang. <laughs> Junda Chu. <laughs> Li Cheng Yu. <laughs> Xi Yang Zhang. <laughs> Shu Yuan Zhang. The Chair of the Committee on International Relations will now present to the Dean the recipients of the degree of Master of Arts in International Relations. Dean Woodward, these students have completed the program of study prescribed by the faculty in the Committee on International Relations. On behalf of the faculty in the Committee on International Relations, I now have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Master of Arts. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in international relations. I now present you with the diploma of the University of Chicago. Sophie Ann Dash. Jordan Dean Ernson. Samuel James Housekeeper. Karen Ulrika Kirschke. 
Leah Khan. Liu Han Shao. Tali Magali Nybrif. Lena Ahmed Rafat. Olivia Hanna Rosenzweig. Adam D. Saxton. Pavna Srikumar Rishmi. Elaine Stecker. B. Wei. Fei Fei Yang. The director of the Center for Middle Eastern Studies will now present to the dean the recipients of the degree of Master of Arts in Middle Eastern Studies. Dean Woodward, these students have completed the program of study prescribed by the faculty in the Center for Middle Eastern Studies. On behalf of the faculty in the Center for Middle Eastern Studies, I now have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Master of Arts. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in Middle Eastern Studies. I now present you with the diploma of the University of Chicago. John Ghaleb Al-Haddad. Benjamin Beams. Khalif <laughs> Botan. Kara Lindsay Burns Saidi. Maria Rita Derbani. Karim Isawi. Rachel Clarissa Eisman. <laughs> Jacob Charles Potts. <laughs> Lauren Amelia Poulsen. <laughs> Brooke Ariel Provenchain. <laughs> Nicole Shahbazian. Jin Yi Wei, Taylor Courtney White, the faculty director of the Master of Arts program in the Social Sciences will now present to the Dean the recipients of the degree of Master of Arts in Social Sciences. Dean Woodward, these students have completed the program of study prescribed by the faculty in the Master of Arts program in the Social Sciences. On behalf of the faculty in the Division of the Social Sciences, I now have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Master of Arts. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in the social sciences. I now present you with the diploma of the University of Chicago. Trenton James Ackerman. <laughs> Sophie Rebecca Allman. Cyan Bell. <laughs> Abigail Rose Bergman. Michael Schiller Bauer. Lauren Lee Cantasesi. Cristobal Cerda Meneses. Chen Chu. Liam Coles. Catherine Teresa Connors. Rosemary Cook. 
Hannah Claire Cutright. Ashley Ruth Davis. Hung Yong Fong. Kai Fung. Leah Veronica Firestone. Katie Furrow. Samuel J. G. Precious Graham. Michael Guzzi. Chloe Hans Barrientos. Danielle Nicole Jacks. Sarah Jensen. Theodore Lai Wenming. Aiden Goodwin Lee. Jeffrey Luters. Michael Edward McGalliard. Frank Naharo Izquierdo. Jiun Pan. Kamala Passeria. John Henry Albert Pizzuto. Adam Rafael Phillips. Myra Rashid. Peter Meyer Reimer. Angela Romea. Helen Galvin Ross. Jasper Rickman. Michael J. Sanders. Sergio Servan Lozano. Stanton Ian Sturgill. Haley Nicole Vartanian. Mungru Wong. Jinzi Wong. Yunhan Wen. Sally Wolf. Tiffany Wu. Fong Ye. Su Min Yu. Bo Zhang. Fong Yuan Zhao. The Chair of the Department of Anthropology will now present to the Dean the recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Anthropology. Dean Woodward, each of the students I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty in the Department of Anthropology, I now have the honor to present them as recipients of the de degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in anthropology. I now present you with the diploma and hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you to this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Joe Bonney, everything is full of gods, representing religion at the edges of empires.
Nicholas Carby Denning, Reconstituting the Nature of the Nation, Extractivism, Biodiversity, and the Rights of Nature in Ecuador. <laughs> Molly Cunningham, Detroit Can't Wait, Love and War at the Brink of Municipal Death, an Ethnographic Accounting of Emergency. Yazan Haitam Bishara Dogan, Corruption, Authority, and the Discursive Production of Reform and Revolution in Jordan. <laughs> William John Feeney, Laughing Until It Hurts, Children, Mothers, and Concerns About Comedic Television in Contemporary Japan. Karma Franklin Frierson, Harocho Publics and the Presencing of Blackness in the Port City of Veracruz, Mexico. <laughs> Mayra Hayat, Ecologies of Water Governance in Pakistan, The Colony, The Corporation, and The Contemporary. Mary Denise Robertson, Selling Aspiration, Recognizing Difference, Race, Class, and the Politics of Advertising in South Africa. <laughs> Dean Woodward, the student I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty in the Department of Anthropology and the Department of History, I now have the honor to present him as recipient of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in anthropology and history. I now present you with the diploma in hood of the University of Chicago and welcome you to this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Zebulon York Dingley, Kinship Capital and the Occult on the South Coast of Kenya. Dean Woodward, the student I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty in the Department of Anthropology and the Department of Linguistics, I now have the honor to present her as recipient of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in anthropology and linguistics. I now present you with the diploma in hood of the University of Chicago and welcome you into this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Britta Elizabeth Ingebrigtsen, curating value, the politics of language and leisure in Huangshan, China. Dean Woodward, the student I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty in the Department of Anthropology and the Department of South Asian Languages and Civilizations, I now have the honor to present her as recipient of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in anthropology and South Asian languages and civilizations. I now present you with the diploma in hood of the University of Chicago and welcome you into this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Julie Alyssa Hanlon, Jain monks, merchants, and kings in early historic South India. A 
faculty member from the Department of Comparative Human Development will now present to the dean the recipients of the degrees of Master of Arts and Doctor of Philosophy in Comparative Human Development. Dean Woodward, these students have completed the program of study prescribed by the faculty in the Department of Comparative Human Development. On behalf of the faculty in the Department of Comparative Human Development, I now have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Master of Art. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in Comparative Human Development. I now present you with the diploma of the University of Chicago. Bronwyn Leigh Nichols Lodato. Krista Lay Olson. <laughs> Dean Woodward, each of the students I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty in the Department of Comparative Human Development, I now have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in comparative human development. I now present you with the diploma and hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you to this ancient and honorable company of scholars. David Aftab Ansari. <laughs> D dare to be a future therapist, uncertainty and apprenticeship in mental health for immigrants and refugees in Paris, France. Mm -hmm. Christine E. Fleener, Growing Up Rhesus, a dynamic systems approach to spatial cognitive development and early experience in free ranging rhesus macaques. Macaca mulatta. Alexis Lynn Marie Howard, Exploring Disability Outcomes Among Aging Latinos in the United States, a Mixed Methods Approach. <laughs> Stephen Andrew Jacobs, Balancing Abortion Rights and Fetal Rights, a Mixed Methods Mediation of the U.S. Abortion Debate. Emily McLaughlin Lyons, Learning Under Pressure, Stereotype Threat and Evaluative Performance Pressure in the Mathematics Classroom. Tasneem Mustafa Manival, The Thing on Their Heads, How Muslim American Women Become Navigators of a New Culture. Erin K. McPhee, An Ambivalent Peace, Mistrust, Reconciliation and the Intervention Encounter in Colombia. <laughs> Nora Catherine Nichols, The Relationship Between Acute Psychosocial Stress, Hormones, Cognition, and Social Behavior in Men and Women.
Carly Apadani Bertrand, Understanding Collective Adaptation to External Threat, a case study of mixed status immigrant community in Chicago. Gabrielle Velas, Conceptualized Peace, a study of Colombian adolescents' meaning making and civic engagement. <laughs> Dean Woodward, the student I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty in the Department of Comparative Human Development and the Department of Linguistics, I now have the honor to present her as recipient of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed an advanced study, an advanced program of study in comparative human development and linguistics. Um, I now present you with the diploma in hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you into this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Laura Ann Horton, Conventionalization of Shared Home Sign Systems in Guatemala, Social, Lexical, and Morphophonological Dimensions. The chair of the Committee on the Conceptual and Historical Studies of Science will now present to the dean the recipient of the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Conceptual and Historical Studies of Science. Dean Woodward, the student I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty in the Committee on Conceptual and Historical Studies of Science, I now have the honor to present him as a recipient of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed a program of advanced studies in conceptual and historical studies of science. I now present you with the diploma in hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you into this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Ryan William Dahn, the forgot... The forgotten founder of quantum mechanics, the science and politics of physicist Pasquale Jordan, 1902 to 1980. The chair of the Kenneth C. Griffin Department of Economics will now present to the dean the recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Economics and the Doctor of Philosophy in Financial Economics. Dean Woodward, each of the students I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty in the Kenneth C. Griffin Department of Economics, I now have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in economics. I now present you with a diploma and hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you into this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Trewit Aria Thugan, Asset Pricing Implications of the Interest on Reserve Policy. Meru Banot, The Effects of Credit Supply Shocks and Neighborhood Spillovers on Housing Investment. <laughs> <laughs> 
evidence from Chicago. Nicolas Castro, Essays in Macroeconomics and Production Networks. Jose Ignacio Cuesta, Essays on Regulation of Credit and Health Markets. Chiara Frato, Essays on Mobility Restrictions and Agents' Behavior. <laughs> Lloyd Sangwoo Han, Dynamics of Macroeconomic Forecasting Variation and Correlation Structure in the Business Cycle. Lancelot Henri de Frahan, Essays on Inequality, Fairness, and Taxation. <laughs> Jun Hyung Kim, The Economics of Parenting Skill and Child Development. Jan Kozak, Essays in Financial Stability and the Public Sector. <laughs> David Jordan Takeshi Mallison, Relationship Quality, Family Structure, and Child Outcomes. Christina Orban, The Inception of Capitalism Through the Lens of Firms. <laughs> Mohammed Alparslan Tunkai, Assortative Mating and Inequality. Winnie Van Dyke, The Socioeconomic Consequences of Housing Assistance. <laughs> Patrick Redmond Ward, Preventive Health and Productive Leisure. Karen Yi, Understanding Peer Effects in Educational Decisions, Evidence from Theory and a Field Experiment. <laughs> Dean Woodward. Each of the students I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced study and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty in the Kenneth C. Griffin Department of Economics and in the Booth School of Business, I have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in financial economics. I now present you with the diploma in hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you into this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Michael Douglas Barnett, a run on oil, climate policy, stranded assets, and asset prices.
Alejandro Hoyos Suarez, Clientele, Political Ideology, and Asset Prices. <laughs> Payman Korami, The Risk of Risk Sharing, Diversification, and Boom-Bust Cycles. Willem Jan van Vliet, Connections as Jumps, Estimating Financial Interconnectedness from Market Data. I will now present to the Dean the recipient of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and Education. Dean Woodward. The student I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty and the Division of the Social Sciences, I now have the honor to present her as recipient of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in education. I now present you with a diploma in hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you to this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Marilyn S. Webb. <laughs> the good death The Good Death, The New American Search to Reshape the End of Life. The Chair of the Department of History will now present to the Dean the recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in History. Dean Woodward, each of the students I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty in the Department of History, I now have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in history. I now present you with the diploma in hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you into this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Marcel and Wiese Pimentel. <laughs> From, from Pacific Gateway to Tourist City, Mobility, Revolution, and the Development of the Mexican Seaside, Acapulco, Mexico, 1849 to 1970. <laughs> Michaela Apeltova, did the body have a Cold War? Gendered bodies and embodied experiences in late socialist Czechoslovakia. Mohammed Balan, the scribe of the Alhambra, Lisan al Din ibn al Hatib, Sovereignty and History in Nazred Granada. John Schuyler Cropper, Fueling the State Energy, Politics, and the Environment in Senegal, 1450 to the Present. Elizabeth Ann Fretwell, Tailoring Benin, 
material culture and artisan production in urban West Africa. Kyu Jun Jo, the rise of the South Korean left, the death of unitary socialism, and the origins of the Korean War, 1945 to 1947. Trish Kajla, the graveyard shift, mining democracy in an age of energy crisis, 1963 to 1981. Noriko Kanahara, Perceptions of Islam and Muslims in Japan, 1920 to 1945. <laughs> Teju Kim, The Moral Realism of the Postwar Japanese Intellectuals. Zachary Tyler Leonard, Against Anomaly, India Reformism and the Politics of Colonial Descent. Okay. Kirsty Ann Montgomery, Floating Bridges, Knotty Points and Burramunga Tools, Malthus, Extra-Parliamentary Politics and the Debates on Emigration, 1798 to 1834. <laughs> Justin Robert Nehemiah Dahoney, a, a Vital Matter, Alchemy, Cornucopianism and Agricultural Improvement in 17th Century England. Kai Perry Parker, Faith Without Hope, Black Protestants, Chicago, and the Critique of Progress, 1914 to 1968. <laughs> Laura Elizabeth Stith Scott, Assembly, Dissent, and Political Cohesion, Bohemian Institutional Development in the 15th Century. <laughs> Caroline Virginie Sequin, Prostitution and the Policing of Race in the French Atlantic, 1848 to 1947. Christopher Patrick Todd, The Slave's Money, Bondage, Freedom, and Social Change in Jamaica, 1776 to 1832. <laughs> Erica Lotte Schinkel, The Just Enemy in a Time of Terror and Conflict. Dean Woodward, the student I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty in the Department of Near Eastern Languages and Civilizations and the Department of History, I now have the honor to present her as recipient of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. 
You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in Near Eastern languages and civilizations and history. I now present you with the diploma in Hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you to this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Claire Nadine Rosine. Socialism mediated the Soviet mass public in Uzbekistan, 1928 to 37. The chair of the Department of Political Science will now present to the dean the recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Political Science. Dean Woodward, each of the students I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and, and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty in the Department of Political Science, I now have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed a program of advanced studies in political science. I now present you with a diploma in Hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you into this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Fabian Arsuaga, Paradoxes of Individuality, Liberalism, the Crisis of Work, and the Critique of Political Economy. Yuna Blayer de la Garza, a house is not a home, citizenship and belonging in contemporary democracies. <laughs> Alfredo Gonzalez. Other than honorable, the rise and decline of citizenship for service, 1918 to 1965. <laughs> Jennifer Marcella Jackson, race, risks, and responses, mapping black e Americans' reactions to group threat. Sana Jaffrey, leveraging the Leviathan, politics of impunity and the rise of vigilantism in democratic Indonesia. Yeun Ju Lee, Democracy Without Redistribution, The Sense of Injustice, Perceived Inequality, and Preferences for Redistribution in East Asia. <laughs> William Spencer Levine, The Movement is Everything, Radical Kantianism, and the Ideal of Emancipation in Modern Germany. Asfandiar Ali Mir, explaining effectiveness in modern counterinsurgency. <laughs> Robert J. Reamer, Jr., Reconstructing Capitalism, Critical Theory, New Materialism, and the Politics of Possibility. Megan Marie Savo, Expectations, Perceptions, and Social Roles, the Effects, of, the Effects and Performance of Gender in Campaigns for the U.S. Congress. Mm. K. 
Kevin Kaiwen Wang, Shaping Leviathan's Teeth, State Building and Military Strategy in Republican China, 1937 to 1949. The Chair of the Department of Psychology will now present to the Dean the recipients of the degrees of Master of Arts and Doctor of Philosophy in Psychology. Dean Woodward, these students have completed the program of study prescribed by the faculty in the Department of Psychology. On behalf of the faculty in the Department of Psychology, I now have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Master of Arts. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in psychology. I now present you with the diploma of the University of Chicago. Delisha Monet Braxton. <laughs> Madeline Oswald. Nancy Pantoja. <laughs> Dean Woodward, each of the students I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty in the Department of Psychology, I now have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy you have successfully completed a program of advanced study in psychology. I now present you with a diploma in hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you into this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Carlos Cardenas Inez. A, a critical examination of the impact of social stratification and the environment on brain development and mental health. Kelly Elizabeth Faig, The Psychophysiology of Social Behavior, a focus on the behavioral immune system. <laughs> Joshua James Foster, Alpha Band Oscillations Track Spatial Priority in the Human Brain. Omid Cardon, no hearst for the weary, suppression of scale-free brain activity as a measure of cognitive effort and predictor of working memory performance. <laughs> Elliot Andrew Layden, functional connectivity signatures of interhemispheric coordination and vocal learning in the zebra finch brain. Heather Harden Mangelsdorf, using parasympathetic activity to gain insights into gesture and learning. I will now present to the Dean the recipients of the degrees of Master of Arts and Doctor of Philosophy in Social Thought. Dean Woodward, this student has completed the program of study prescribed by the faculty in the Committee on Social Thought. On behalf of the faculty in the Committee on Social Thought, I now have the honor to present him as recipient of the degree of Master of Arts. You have successfully completed a program of study in social thought. I now present you with a diploma of the University of Chicago. Paul Cato. <laughs> D. 
Dean Woodward. Each of the students I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty and the Committee on Social Thought, I have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed an advanced program of study in social thought. I now present you with the diploma and hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you into this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Lindsay Marie Atnip, From Tragic Form to Apocalyptic Reality in Four American Works, Toward an Epistemological Theory and Practice of Reading. Agnes Elizabeth Malinowska, Technocratic Evolution, Experimental Naturalism, and American Biopolitics around 1900. <laughs> Joseph Edward Simmons, Irenic Modernism, the early work of David Jones and W.H. Auden. Philip Bennett Sugg, The Search for a View of the Whole, Models of Community in Goethe, Eliot, and Melville. <laughs> Dean Woodward, the student I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty and the Committee on Social Thought and the Department of Classics, I now have the honor to present him as a recipient of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in social thought and classics. I now present you with the diploma and hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you into this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Conrad Charles Wieda, Imagine Languages, and Forms of Life, Horace Reads Virgil. <laughs> the Chair of the Department of Sociology will now present to the Dean the recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Sociology. Dean Woodward, each of the students I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. I now have, on behalf of the faculty in the Department of Sociology, I now have the honor to present them as recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in sociology. I now present you with a diploma and hood of the University of Chicago, and I welcome you into this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Mariam Alamzadi, Institutionalization of a Revolutionary Army, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, 1979 to 1982. Chad Richard Borkenhagen, scientific, <laughs> scientific knowledge and social structure in the culinary arts and mathematical finance. <laughs> Danya Raquel Lagos, <laughs> embodiment Identity and Gender Regimes in the United States, Findings from Population Surveys. <laughs> Alicia Rose Riley, the social... <laughs> the social production of health inequalities across state and regional contexts. Brian Tui, Mexican Chicago. 
Mexican Chicago, Modes of Incorporation in a Mexican-American Network. <laughs> Congratulations, graduates. Let's all have a round of applause. Congratulations. Congratulations to you all. Today we recognize your singular achievement, the completion of a graduate degree. It's the result of your passion, your commitment, your sheer effort and brilliance all combined. And there are few occasions in life where one gets to celebrate the fruits of a long labor. And I encourage you to make good use of this one. Celebrate and savor the moment. You've done something truly exceptional. It's also an occasion for gratitude, of course. No individual achievement of the scale that you're celebrating today is possible without the help of other people, um, the families and partners and friends and mentors and colleagues who've all contributed in essential ways to what you've accomplished. So as you take the time to celebrate and savor your remarkable success, I know that you will also take time to thank those who made this success possible. As you were conferred your degrees today, I welcomed you into the ancient and honorable company of scholars. And the fact that these are the words we say in a ceremony like this one is testament to the foundational role of community in academic life. In fact, you've been members of our community of scholars um, from the start of your time here. It didn't just start today. And this is important not just for you, but maybe even more so for the university. Graduate programs are not simply extensions of the intellectual work that university faculty members do. They are integral to the intellectual work of the university. Each of you has brought new insights, new ways of seeing, and new energy into our scholarly community. And so on behalf of my colleagues, I thank you for that. Now this university is a community that is guided by strong principles. It strives, it tries, to be a place that supports and challenges thinkers regardless of who they are a place where the hierarchies and prejudices that bedevil other parts of our lives are leveled in the clear, bright light of inquiry. And you can see this commitment to this goal from the origins of this university. Women and men of diverse races, religions, and backgrounds have been part of this community since its beginning. Nevertheless, like all universities, this one has sometimes fallen short of that ideal. And we're reminded of that fact today by the story of one of our graduates who was awarded her PhD after uh, over 50 years after beginning her doctoral program. <laughs> now, Marilyn Webb gave me permission to talk a bit about her story. And you may have uh, seen it in the university's news site or in the press. Marilyn began the doctoral program in education in the 1960s. When it was time for her to find a doctoral advisor, she encountered biased and harassing behavior um, from the faculty members that she approached. And this experience led Marilyn to conclude that this place was not for her, and so the university lost a promising young scholar. How does the university find redemption in the aftermath of such a regrettable event? How is our intellectual community healed and made more ideal? We got the chance to confront those questions when Marilyn came back to pursue the opportunity that she'd been denied. And a journalist at some point in all of this asked me, what's the special new initiative that made Marilyn's PhD possible? And there are two answers. The first and the most important one is that Marilyn did it. This is her victory. With the courage and fortitude and, and brilliance, she returned to the university to complete and defend a dissertation. That's the headline. Underneath it, there's a second answer. There wasn't any special new policy that suddenly made it possible. The university's usual machinery was simply, finally, and justly made available to Marilyn. Key to this was a faculty dissertation committee chaired by my colleague Kay Cagney that gave Marilyn's ideas their full and critical attention. 
This is, I think, where we find redemption in doing the honest, scholarly work that makes this place a university, and by being vigilant in eliminating the barriers that prevent scholars like Marilyn from participating fully in our community. Um, and as I welcome you into being alums of the university, I invite you to continue to remind us of the ways that we can meet that goal. Now, I know that among those gathered here, there are many other victories to celebrate, obstacles overcome, and moments of courage and insight that have gotten you to this day. And so I want to congratulate you on all that you have achieved. As you look ahead, remember, you are a part of the University of Chicago community in a permanent way. You are now alumni of the university in the Division of the Social Sciences, and I hope that these relationships will continue to grow and flourish. Now in just a minute, you'll stand up and turn and walk down this lovely aisle and out those doors and into, and I usually say sunlight, but today I have to say humidity, into the humidity, <laughs> onto your next endeavors. On behalf of my colleagues, let me say that it has been our pleasure and our honor to work with you. You've enriched our scholarship and our lives. Congratulations. This concludes the awarding of diplomas in the Division of the Social Sciences in the 532nd Convocation of the University of Chicago.